Okay, welcome back. This is Regina Young and the Zyboys Resource Center. So we are trying to find out who's at fault for the coronavirus spreading because we have listened to PBS News Hour talk about how Donald Trump had information about the coronavirus since January and chose to keep it undercover and didn't want the public to know. And then in February, they had told Donald Trump that he should tell people about it and do certain things, and he didn't want to do it. But they're saying that the governor plays a big role as well. So let's tune back in to PBS NewsHour for April the 13th. And we know, uh, Eric, uh, that the lack of testing, the lack of personal protective equipment, has all, all of that has also been a significant and ongoing challenge. What did your reporting reveal about the delays in, in uh, dealing with all that? Again, there's two phases in this process, the containment phase and the mitigation phase. But during containment, it was evident to any public health expert that this was going to spread in the United States. So as of January, they, they knew that there was going to be you know, illnesses in pockets across the United States. They didn't know how many. But they should have known in January that now is the time to, or, to spend you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to buy you know, face masks and other protective equipment for hospitals. They knew that the, the material in their, in their, uh, in their supplies were, was expired and there wasn't enough of it. Now, they didn't order that stuff until March, but they could have they could have started in January. They could have started the process of getting ventilators built in January, knowing that they likely were going to need them. That didn't happen until March, and that has severe consequences as well. So here's my problem I have. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning. I tell you, being on stay-at-home for quarantine um, for a lot of people should be a... Um, wake up call because you should be able to find out information you really need to read up and listen to this stuff i have been staying home and just going to certain things because i'm non-profit through regina young and the zy boys resource center we still go out to help people in the community but my thing is i do come in contact and i do work part-time in a medical field and I'm going to be honest, my job didn't start telling us about the coronavirus until March. And they didn't say a word to us about it, but to be safe and be careful and change your gloves. They never gave us the really the big um, uh, breakdown about it until much later. And then when they started having all these open cases because people didn't want to go to houses or they didn't want to do wound care or... It was just a hot mess. So to hear firefighters, doctors, and different people wearing trash bags, um, begging for masses to be made, um, they can't find masses, can't find gloves. This man is saying they knew about it in January. That was plenty of time to get stuff done. So my question is, once again, who's at fault? Like, who do you blame? I mean, there's enough of blame to go around to the WHO. I can see people saying you blame them. I can even see people now blaming Donald Trump. I can see people blaming the governor. When my son was going to school and he goes to Lake Forest School District, I told them, I said, why are the schools still open? I actually told them before they decided to go ahead and shut down that if, I felt like the situation was going to get too bad. My kids were going to be pulled for school for their safety because my son had heart surgery. So I wasn't willing to take that risk when I knew they had health issues like asthma and everything else. I wasn't willing for my kids to stay in the school and all that going on. And when I seen the staff at the school wash a bloody nose child in the cafeteria water fountain sink i was like absolutely something has to be done i immediately went to the school and reported it to the principal and said hey what are y'all gonna do especially now that there's rumors the coronavirus is closer than you think at that time there was no real physical uh positive um saying um of a, a virus in the area where we were 
But still, I immediately had issues when I seen that. Eric Lipton uh, with the New York Times. Congratulations on some really extraordinary reporting. Thank you. Thank you. And we turn now to our White House correspondent, Yamish Alcindor, for the latest. So, Yamish, what more do we know about the administration's response uh, to all this in the early days? And separately, what are you hearing about the president's desire to get things opened up? Well, it's clear that the president and health officials um, were at least delayed in in easing and in recommending mitigation um, and, and mitigation and in social distancing guidelines. And the president just now had a remarkable press briefing that's still going on where he is defending point by point his response to the coronavirus. And, and in doing so, he showed this kind of campaign style video that we've just never seen at a White House briefing before. He was asked about it. He said that White House staff put it together. But it's clear that the president is feeling very defensive because of the reporting that Eric just talked to you about and also because of the reporting that, of course, we've been doing on the news hour that shows that he was very eager to try to get through this without doing mitigation. And Yamisha, I want to ask you about something that came up uh, earlier in the program. They're blaming him. The president retweeting uh, the statement that Anthony Fauci, who, of course, has been a critical uh, figure in the administration's response to the to COVID-19, that he should be fired. The administration today said... That's Donald Trump's uh, answer for everything. Anywhere, but what's the Everybody can't be fired. You, uh, you've been able to learn. Well, today... Dr. Fauci and President Trump spoke about this right at the beginning of the White House briefing. And the president said that he and Anthony Fauci's relationship is really great and that people are making something out of nothing. I he hope said that so. He tweeted a tweet that said, fire Fauci, um, without really thinking about it. He said, I don't really know why I retweeted it. Of course, the president had 76 million Twitter followers. So this is a very big megaphone. And he said, I didn't mean that I would want to fire Anthony Fauci. I'm not going to fire Anthony Fauci. So the president and Dr. Fauci are both making it clear that Dr. Fauci's job is completely secure, which for the critics of the president um, is going to make them very calm and very comfortable with the fact that that is the way that's going forward as of, ne as of right now. Isn't it uh, funny? Wish, I mean, just quickly, the pr some people who are fans of the president have been critical of Dr. Fauci. That's right. There's been a move on the conservative right um, to talk about Dr. Anthony Fauci in a very criticizing way, to talk about the fact that he might be part of the reason why the president won't get reelected. But the president is saying that he is not part of that and that people should, that he respects uh, Dr. Fauci and that other people should too. Do or am I the only one to notice that every time that it comes to election time, when it's time to vote for a president, we always have a huge crisis. It's always something major going on in the world um, and United States. And it always seems like they use the crisis to determine whether a president will be reelected or not. What Donald Trump does now, I think a lot of people are going to watch. And it will respond to him getting reelected. The fact that they're saying, so many people are saying, what videos and proof that he knew about this a long time ago does not set well with a lot of people. However, if the governor is the one that is in charge of shutting down the state, it's kind of hard to blame Donald Trump on it by saying it's all his fault because the governor should have shut it down. That's the whole reason why you pick and vote for governors as well as presidents. So if your governor and your state didn't shut down your state when you thought he should, that's something you need to consider when you go to revote because I'm not going to lie. I had serious concerns when the schools were still open. And my question was, why haven't they shut down the schools? Soon after I said that, and I made the um, information known about what was going on in the school and how I brought it to attention. I was very pleased when someone said, well, you do know the schools are being closed due to the coronavirus. I was happy i was thrilled because my next step was to contact the governor to find out why this was happening at a school why the coronavirus uh rumors were out there so and i have to admit i was very happy that the school principal did turn around when i told her about the event that happened and how the blood was in um, the cafeteria, she did go in to have them clean it right away. I didn't see them clean it, but she did go in and tell them that they needed to clean it. 
Tell me what you think about the situation. Like, comment, and tell me how your